Now this is one of the little barns. This is where we put the camping loose. There's the front of the house. That's the Passiflora and the Solanum, and a few other bits and bobs. Conquer tree, little willow. The corner of the house. Uh, there's a few civilized shrubs in there or plants. This is my Nephleo tree. And the side of the house. Yes, we cleared all this away. I've got my yucca coming up, a few artichokes. That's here, an olive tree, and I'll put a few little pansies. I'm going to make a little rockery here. These are my figs. Absolutely full of bees and wasps and other things. So I'm a bit wary of those. When you come round here, here's my pond. Now this is the top part of my garden which is fairly civilised. I'll go right the way around now. So this is the vegetable garden which comes down from the pond. Here are my rhododendrons, because this is still civilization, and that will be my main shrubbery over there, which we'll come round to later. Okay. Now we're going down into the what what is really called a natural reserve because it's not a wild flower garden or anything like that it's just trying to manage the natural gra grasses and just adding a few little bits of color for me right these two islands i cut with a scythe twice because they'd finished their seeding And I'm just going to slowly through the autumn and winter cut the other islands as they finish their flowers. Right. This island hasn't been cut yet. I just made a start at the top here. But as you can see, there's still yarrow flowering. There's still cranes bill. We're still getting butterflies. So this is a wild area, completely wild. I've just managed to get a lot of the nettles out there are still some I leave a lot at the docks because they are home to an awful lot of creatures and here's my next island down which has got a compost heap in it and that's got a beautiful green lizard living in there and my apple trees this is going down the side of the field Next island. I've got quite a lot of scything to do, I think. A few cosmos. I've got a few other bits and bobs in as well. You can't see them. I've got some, um, what's it called, comfrey I've put in the centre of this. 
and then there's trees growing their peach trees and nectarines in there. Had a few apples, I, I planted a Worcester. And then this is a, an island I'm just getting going really because I've changed the shape of it. And that goes up that way. The spaces in between are basically for camping. I quite like this bit because it has a lot of Yorkshire fog in it. And that goes right down to the bottom. One of the willow trees I brought with me. Already starting to lose its leaves. Yeah. This has got a heck of a lot of wild mint in it. I managed to reduce it a bit because we had too much. And we've got a lot of this bed straw. Got an awful lot of that. Got an awful lot of these little wild carrots. There's an, an enormous amount of stuff in here actually. And then here I've planted a comfrey. Um, no, not a comfrey. Penstemon, which gives me beautiful colours in the spring and summer. And that's the um, catmint there. So up here, we're still still down the right at the bottom. Here's this, one of the salvias, which is next to my ulala poppies. A small cosmos there. And then you can see my sage, which I'm starting to clear. If you look back towards the house, you can see the other side of these islands. That one there is a heart shape, in the middle of which is a rose. Under the trees I did some scything and I've sown some seeds. I'm trying to get some yellow rattle established, and uh, which is helpful for cutting out some of the grasses. Because I, a lot of the grasses I want, but some of them just getting a bit too hefty. In amongst the sage here is a lot of yarrow, which looks beautiful when it's in flower. I want to encourage a bit more borage, as you can see there's a lot of bed straw here again. That's an elder tree, silver birch, my briar rose. That's a little pathway I cut down to the bottom there. This again has a lot of Yorkshire fog in it, it's absolutely gorgeous. And. Um, this is a lovely place to camp here. This is where all the bugle grows as well. I love the bugle. Along the bottom hedge we get a lot of those white star flowers which are beautiful. I've got a few baby oaks growing as well by the look of it. Where's he gone? And in This bit over here, I've started my little hazel copse and a bit of a compost heap. There's one hazel, there's another one there. Be nice when I can take the bamboos out and they can be seen for what they are. And another one. lost him. Mm. There he is. And that's a walnut tree. It's a nice big oak. That's a little oak. That's a, a maple. So we come up round this way. This willow's doing really nice, he really likes it here. <coughs> you can 
can still see the flowers here. And the mint in flower. Even now. A few nettles. I'll get rid of some of those because I've getting too many again. They soon take off. Over here I've got a wild plum tree. There's an older tree. That's a plum tree. There you can see the patch I was on about before. That's a palm there. At the end I've got some really big asters of this plot. And I've just started clearing away in here. I've forgotten the name of these. They're beautiful, have masses of white flowers on. There's a delphinium at the bottom there. And then here's another delphinium, very overgrown. So I'll have to hoik him out soon. And these are nearly, these are finished really. So once they finish going to seed, I'll get rid of all those. That's Hubert's field next door where he has his sheep. Now this big patch here, we're going to plant. I'm going to put a tarpaulin, I'm going to cut it, put a tarpaulin and use it. Not sure what I'm going to plant in there. Have an idea. This I've just done cut once with the scythe, I've got to cut it again. Because it's so flat it's very, very difficult to cut and the strimmer just doesn't go near it. This one's another plum tree. I've got quite a few cornflowers in this bit, but obviously they're near enough finished. And you can see, we're looking back there, coming up the hill now. That's a peach tree that has big peaches on. Really like that. Pumpkin's gone a bit potty. I picked this one, but I had to put it back because it's got an ant's nest in it. So the rest I've taken up to the house bar one. Got a baby oak there. The whole of the length of the hedge, I've planted trees. A mixture of hazel and willow. That's a hibiscus. There's a little baby choicea here. And then that's my ceanothus. And then... This is quite a wild patch. It's going to take me a bit to get through this lot. I have to have my muscles in that day. A little baby Nephilie there. And here, on the edge of the hedge, I forgot to tell you, I've put in some of those... Um, oh, what's the name of them? They have the big orange trumpet flowers on and climb. And then in the middle is a pine, baby pine tree coming up. So, go back to looking at it from this angle. So I'm coming up now. I've got Clematis in there. And he is surviving at the moment. And then this is coming up to my border with Jean Bernard and Evie. And I've got a maple in there. So um, I've got quite a lot of the um, dogwood around the place, loads of it. My honesty, there's a couple of um, cardoons in there, but I'm not sure they've survived. Oh yeah, they have. I can see their leaves. Right, this is a lilac. Actually, Evie said it was a lilac, but I've got doubts. I've put a, one of those in, which I can't remember the name of. Yellow flowers. Another hibiscus. It's my lovely sapper. I love this tree. This is a bay tree, and I, I did myself in last year getting the uh, brambles off it. I really hurt my shoulder. But they're off now. I just have to keep up with them. Then this is mostly mint again, so you can see I'm going to try and have to manage 
to get rid of some of the mint because I'm getting too much of one species and get some other wild grasses in. And then that's a little maple tree there. These are rhododendrons I planted. This is my edge here with Jean Bernard and Evie. He's just had this bit terraced and he's just letting it go wild for the minute while he decides what to do. Then this is a continuation of my civilized shrubbery. Here's one of the shrubs you bought me, the azalea. That's the dutzia. Then the salvia that I planted with the hebe. And this was rather disappointing, but it is coming on. This is the little cornice that you bought me. And then I'm coming around the other side. <coughs> you can see I've got more islands down there. And this is basically hopefully going to be filling up because the willow will grow. And the nephilim will grow there. That's another big fig tree. And a hazel tree and an oak tree. And I need to trim this one. This is a green lizard bush. In fact, all my compost heaps got green lizards in there. Lovely. And I've got a baby, baby tree in here, which I think is a... Oh, can't see it. Where's it gone? I lost it. Oh, there it is. There it is. I'm fairly sure it's a wild cherry. Which I put in. My Japanese maple. <laughs> this will make you laugh. If you can see this. Where is he? can't see him. There's a ginkgo here. There he is. Look. One leaf. No, two, three leaves. And a bit better. Another hebe. My roses are doing really well considering they're all from cuttings. Really pleased about those. The, uh, where's the astrantia you gave me? Uh, it's here somewhere. I weeded it the other day. Where's it gone? Can't find it. Can't find it. That's a Judas tree. Here it is. It's very, very small. They were very small plants, but it is there. Right next to my Hebe. That's a, an Australian fire bush. I'll put a few little flowers underneath the hazel and there's a buddleia there as well. And you come back round up the top here. And basically I'm hoping all these will join up. And there's my tulip tree. I've got my evergreen oak, Luke bought me, Luke and Jen, and I've put in some viburnums, where these bamboos are, you can see there's viburnums, there's choicea, there's um, some more cornus there, there's Evie going shopping by the look of it, my chickens, half grown now. This is the willow tree that I planted for mum with the um, primulas underneath, which you can't see at the moment, which I planted for dad. And then that's our entrance. And that's our other barn. And this is the roof Nick was working on. We just straightened that one. And we're coming back to the house. So there we go, video of uh, trying to create a natural reserve with a bit of civilization.